Hey, Professor Z here coming to you from the classroom with another tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Godox Stroke Kit. These are using three SK400 Mark II heads for your strokes. So inside this kit, this is a kit on wheels. It does have wheels on the bottom because it is pretty heavy to wheel around. It's got the handle on top. You pick it up with the straps. Make sure you have both straps together to lift it up. And I recommend when assembling this kit, I keep the bag on the floor. I just put it up on the table here for a little easy demonstration right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and unzip it here. And on the top here, which is gonna fall away from me, is where I have the uh, the remote stored and also some extra fuses for the, the flash heads. And there's a cable. So if you want to hook it up directly to the camera, the cable you can and the manuals. Inside here, we have two different bags to on top. The smaller one is the one that comes with the kit when you buy it as a kit. So this has a, a soft box in it. So if you open it up, there is a mount adapter that goes on top of your lights. It's a Bowens mount adapter. And it has, this one's actually still in the packaging here, but it has all the assembly kits to put together a soft box. And in case you want to use two soft boxes, we have an additional. This one is a little bit bigger. Again, it has the adapter, but also in here, still wrapped up here, but this is the honeycomb grid. So you can stretch this out and put it inside your soft box to shape your light a little differently. Or you can always do reflective lighting. So we have two different umbrella choices inside the kit. This is a metallic reflective umbrella. So it has metallic reflectiveness on the inside. Let me open that up for you to see what it looks like. There we go. So you can see that is a reflective metallic surface for that umbrella. And this other umbrella right here is more traditional white reflective. So it's got the white on the inside and the black on the outside to stop it from spilling out. And these always get stored back in the plastic sleeves. Right to the plastic's not gonna last forever, but let's keep them lasting as long as possible. And then you have three stands because you have one for each uh, flash head, of course. Now these, we loosen them up here first. If they're not already loosened already, I'm gonna set this one on the floor right here behind me. We'll use this one to set up one of our lights. And what's nice about these, and, and it's always good anytime you have a heavier uh, kind of unit that you're gonna use with your equipment. If you're gonna use a heavier strobe head or flash head, you want something that has a little cushion in a spring cushion. So that way, if this fails and your equipment comes crashing down, it's gonna bounce a little bit instead of having a harsh stop, which can cause it to fall over or break or just bad things can happen. So that's nice that that's in there. So we have three of those. So let's move these out to the side for now. You say, and then you'll see there it is this black divider in here. So this is a firm padded divider in the middle here. And on the bottom, we have our actual lights. So we have three heads plus the power ports for them and two of these reflective bones mounts that go onto them. So let me move this bag out of the way now so we can set up one of these lights. Okay, so here we have four of our heads. Uh, you can see it already has the mount built onto the bottom. So there's no additional mount that you have to put on. It's right here on the bottom. So with this handle, just loosen it up so you can turn this. Don't ever force this. If it's too, if it feels like it's too tight, loosen this a little bit more and tighten it back down. Firm, but don't over tighten. When you over tighten equipment like this, you're bound to make it crack somewhere and fail. Then you make sure this thread is all the way loose so that way you don't see the, the screw coming out of here so it's open so you can put it on the mount. You notice this part right here, this is actually the lens, the, the, uh, the light is underneath here. I keep this covered until it's on the mount to protect the bulb itself because the bulb actually protrudes out. So let's go ahead and we're actually gonna now put this right on top of here on our light stand. Make sure, you know, fits on all the way. If you still see a little bit of, you know, if it's up here like this, it's not on all the way. We gotta make sure that is down. All right, screw this down. And now this is tightened, okay? And now we can, you know, this can be angled when we need to angle it wherever we need to angle it to. Now I'm ready to go ahead 
and take this cover off. Before I do, I want to say, never touch the bulb with your fingers that's underneath this. The oil in your fingers can cause these bulbs to deteriorate in uneven ways and they will fail and they can break and that's not a good thing. So take this off. There is a little metal release here on the side. You're just going to go ahead and push that in. And then you counterclockwise turn. It's going to do one little click, pull it straight off. Put this in the bag, keep it safe. We need this afterwards. So you'll see there are two bulbs on this. It's not just the strobe bulb. There is a modeling light, which is this circular one on the outside. And then this long one that protrudes out is our strobe light itself. So this modeling light, for in a low light situation, we can turn on the modeling light with the MOD button on the back, and that will stay on. And then the strobe light is what will be the strobe later on. I always tend to wrap my cables around the pole. So if someone trips on the cable, it's not just pulling on the head directly. And plug it in there. And then we'll plug this into the wall. So once everything's plugged in, we'll hit the on button. It's going to beep to let me know it's ready. And we have a visual display here. We have the test button, so you can always test it. Boom, there it works. There's our modeling light button, so we can turn that on and off. See if there's modeling light on, modeling light off. On. There's actually... So there's two different intensities from the modeling light. Low and high and off. You can also turn on and off the buzzer on here. So the buzzer, what it is, is if I have that off, the, the flash goes off, it's not going to audibly tell me it's ready to go again. By having the buzzer on, when the flash goes off, it'll beep again to let me know it's ready to take another picture. Now, with the head like this, the light's just going everywhere. So I want to take a light modifier like this reflective mount, put it on, give it one little twist clockwise until it clicks. And now I'm shaping my light. So I can also put one of the soft boxes on it. And I can also put an umbrella right through here. So there is a hole underneath here that your umbrella goes right through. And it has a little lock on the side here. So you have a little screw lock for your umbrella. Your umbrella goes right through that hole there if you're going to use an umbrella. Okay, so now I have two heads set up. And... You'll notice here on the group, this was on group A, this was on group B. And the reason why that is important is that with the remote, I can define different parameters for each group and have them go off at the same time. So that way, if you want to have a key light and a backlight and a hair light or a fill light, whatever kind of lights you want, you can create that uh, of mood or emotion with different lighting by having each light at its own intensity. So. How do I do that? First of all, if they're not already set to groups, you can hit the group button here on the left, and then you'll see that the group letter is blinking, and I can turn them up or down. So I'm going to have multiples on the same group if I wanted to. For right now, I'm going to put this on C and this one on A. So I might have A, B, and C. And now on the remote, which I can do this, I'm just going to do this with the remote first, but then I'm going to put this on a camera as well. There is a switch on the side here that turns on, and now the remote is on. See, it goes off. And I can, with this little dial here, so there's a little dial on the remote. I'm gonna, this is currently on A. So now that's on A, there's a plus up and down button. So if I hit plus up, you'll see that the intensity is going up. Now one slash one is the highest it can go. I can also go down in intensity. So you can see next to each other as I go down, they're matching. But over here on the one that's marked C, nothing's happening. Now, if I change this to C on my dial and come over to this one, I am adjusting it on the remote trigger and it's adjusting dynamically here, but the other one's staying the same. So they're going off at two different intensities, but they're going off at the same time. Now I can also turn the buzzer on so that beep can go on and off from here. I can also turn on the modeling lamp from here. So I can have those controls that I have on here straight from here. So when I have these set up on their stands high in the air, and this is on my camera, I can still control those settings from this. So here I have a camera. Now, 
What's great is this is a universal mount. Let's go, this hot shoe can go on just about any brand camera. I've tested it on a Lumix, I've tested it on a Canon. So here I have the remote trigger hooked up to a Canon RP and I have it in manual setting. I set my ISO to 100, shutter speed at 200, aperture is at F4. I'm just gonna take a picture of the camera setup. Oops, I have moved my focus point. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a self-portrait real quick. I'm gonna put this into the video. So I have my camera set at 1 200th, ISO 100, and F5. I have all kind of off axis over here, the main strobe, my key light, set at, let's see, I have it set at 1 16th. So it's set at the lowest setting it can go. And I have the other one over here set at 1 8th, and it's actually kind of at a little upward angle. You can't really see from there. So I'm just gonna aim this at myself from arm's length. And that's kind of what you get. So I'm gonna do a couple more of those. Now it's time to break these down and put them away. First of all, make sure you remember how you took them out of the bag and try to put everything back in the same way. I'm gonna safely lower this down to a working height where it's comfortable. And go ahead and power them off. Now you don't have to do a discharge like you might with some other strokes and you shut it off. It's gonna dissipate all the power. You can safely unplug it. Make sure you wrap the cord back nicely. We're gonna take this off. Same way we put it on, I'm gonna pull that little metal latch there. Turn a little bit clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, take that off. And then immediately put your safety cover on. Push that in. Give it a stung turn clockwise until it locks in. Make sure that's on there. Now you can kind of hand touch this. Don't just grab it like that though. If you've been running a long time, it might get really hot. These do get hot after a while because you don't want to put these away in the bag hot. But then you can go ahead and take them off. I'm going to store these. I like to loosen this up and turn this back this way so that way it takes a little less room in the bag. And go ahead and put those back in the bag the way you found them. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the Godox SK400 Mark II. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you actually really enjoy these lights. I'm a big fan of Godox. I personally own one of these for my own stuff, and I have a bunch of their uh, flashes that I use for on-camera flashes in my gear. So uh, I find them really reliable, and I find them much more affordable than some of the other brands that you might be familiar with. If you have any other questions about these, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer as best I can. Thanks for watching.